and uh, please enjoy uh, today's enlightening talk with uh, creative authors. And uh, best wishes to uh, all of you uh, for a wonderful spring. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sugiyama san. Um, I'd also like to take a moment to say, please turn off your cell phones. Should go without saying, but um, like the movies, I've been that person as well. So just make sure it's on, not even vibrate. Let's just go ahead and put the sound off if you can. Um, okay, so now I'm going to turn things over to our moderator for this event. He was a jet in Fukui-ken from 1991 to 1993. He's a writer and a playwright, and is the an author of the highly acclaimed off-Broadway play, Sake with Haiku Geisha, which was based on his own jet experience and which will premiere in Los Angeles in the fall. He gave a memorable keynote address at the pre-departure orientation this past summer and is currently collaborating with Joey McNeely, the choreographer for the recent West Side Story revival, on a play with dance called Shadows. Please welcome Randall David Cook. So, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you. This is probably the first Japanese event I've ever attended that did not start on time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, so, we've already created a landmark, so congratulations. <laughs> um, it's my great pleasure to be here today with three very, very talented writers. Um, I have spent the last part of the week reading all their books. Thank you very much. Um, mm -hmm. And um, if you haven't read their books, you're going to get to hear them portions of them today, and also get to um, hear about what inspires them, their process, and also a little bit about the business of writing. Um, to my far left <coughs> is uh, James Kennedy. Clap. <laughs> We'll be reading from the Order of Odd Fish. And in the middle is Roland Kelts. <laughs> author of Pan America, How Japanese Pop Culture Has Invaded the United States. And to my immediate left is Robert Paul Weston, <laughs> author of Gorka Mizzou. Is that how you pronounce it? It is correct. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I thought it was great. All right. So um, we're going to actually start off with the readings. Um, we're, 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 I'm going to talk with you, actually. Okay, yes. So, yes. Yeah, so um, he's going to take center stage here. Oh. Are you going to stand up here? You're going to... No, I'm definitely... Yes, go down there, yes. Mm. Um, Gorka Mizzou was chosen by Bookless Magazine as one of the 10 best debuts of 2008. Um, and also is a notable book for 2009 by the Children's Literature Assembly. Um, Rob was an ALT from 2002 to 2004, and he is from Narakin. All right, it's all yours, Rob. Uh, yes, okay. Um, so uh, some of you may be looking at this going, maybe I can get it cheaper, but uh, as, a, as a soft cover. It's not a soft cover yet. This is an advanced, an advanced reader's copy. Uh, you must get the hardcover. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, my book is called Zorgum Zoo. It is. Is anyone familiar with this book at all? Anyone? A few people? Yeah? Um, it is a book that many people said uh, couldn't be done or more likely shouldn't be done. <laughs> it, is a, uh, it is a rhyming novel. Um, and uh, when I kind of pitched it to certain people, uh, a lot of, you know, well-meaning, influential people uh, said, um, it's surely not rhyming couplets. Uh, and I said, yeah, it's rhyming couplets. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it was, it was, it's a very labor-intensive way to tell a story. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's, that's uh, it, it's actually written in, um, uh, rhyming accentual verse, uh, which is a, a form of verse where you set the stress, this number of stress beats per line instead of the number of syllables. So every line has approximately 10 to 12 syllables, but all lines have a four stress beats. Um, so that's how that works. It I can sort of just uh, to give you an example of what that is. It begins. Here is a story that's stranger than strange. Before we begin, you may want to arrange a blanket, a cushion, a comfortable seat, and maybe some cocoa and something to eat. Um, <laughs> and so on uh, until the end. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> that's, not, that's not the whole reading. <laughs> um, uh, so, 
Uh, just, I'm going to be reading from chapter 3, and um, just to set it up here, on the cover is a very tiny picture that none of you can see of Katrina Cottrell, who's my protagonist. Oh, by the way, it's a kid's book, by the way. <laughs> uh, if you couldn't already tell, it's a children's book. This is not my usual crowd. Um, so if everyone, if everyone could regress a little bit, and say, I don't know what, 20 years or so? Does that sound on average? Yeah? Um, we'll take that. Yeah, okay. Maybe 15 years? I can flatter you more. Um, I finished uh, it. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, so please don't be alarmed when there's like crazy voices and um, a little bit of silliness. That's, I'm just going to treat you like you're all eight. <laughs> and, um, that'll be that. But I know James is going to do the same, so I'm not, I'm not worried. Um, uh, okay, so Katrina Cottrell, just to set this up, is a young girl. She's very imaginative and very observant. She, uh, she sees things that other people kind of aren't observant enough or just too busy and wrapped up in their own lives to see. So I'm talking about Sasquatches and uh, cre cre creepy crawlies and uh, creatures in, in, in sort of loping in between trees and things. And uh, she, has, uh, she lives with a guardian who is uh, very, a, a typical evil guardian who uh, doesn't see any of these things and thinks that Katrina is going crazy. Um, at the beginning of the book, Katrina sees something sort of shuffling through a subway tunnel, and her guardian, Mrs. Corbone, who uh, Katrina calls Old Krabby. Um, Old Krabby says, no, you're crazy, Katrina. There's nothing. Uh, what you saw is probably just a big rat in the subway. There's something wrong with you. Obviously, you're going crazy. If you don't stop telling these stories, I'm going to hire someone to lobotomize you. <laughs> so... Yeah. So initially, it's just a threat. Um, but now we're in chapter three, and it's, uh, it's late at night. Katrina is uh, up in her bedroom, and she hears someone... I'm going to need this. Hears, she hears someone uh, coming, coming... She hears someone coming in through the front door, and she wonders who would come visit so late in the night. Um, uh, it must be some sort of villain, uh, murderer, thief. I better, I better go see what's going on. So she comes out of her, comes out of her bedroom. She uh, tiptoes to the uh, to the banister at the top of the stairs, and she looks down. And uh, she looks down. And she sees a uh, sees a stranger, and she sees speaking to uh, her guardian, Old Krabby. So. She comes out, banister, looks down, <coughs> and this is what she sees. <coughs> a man stood below on the passageway mat, his collar turned up to the brim of his hat. He took off his gloves, his cap, and his coat. He loosened the muffler that covered his throat. His features were drawn and incredibly dark, but his eyes were aglow with a sinister spark. Old Krabby was there. She was wringing her hands like a criminal hatching felonious plans. She quietly spoke to the man in the hall. Doctor, I'm glad you could answer my call. It's nice you could visit so late in the night. I'm certain your skill will set everything right. You'll cut out the naughtiest bits of her brain so that only the parts that are normal remain. I will do what I can, <laughs> <laughs> the stranger replied. Your need for a surgeon cannot be denied, because, madam, your case is a serious one. So let us discuss it, just what's to be done. Above in the stairwell, Katrina was still, her fingers and throat in the grip of a chill. This stranger, she saw, by his timber and tone, was the sort to send shivers that shook to the bone. And here's what Katrina so furtively heard as her guardian spoke in a whispering word. It's my girl. She's upstairs, and she's coming unwound. She is quite a few ounces short of a pound. Why, only today she redoubled my doubt. 
by claiming some creature was skulking about. Some 